Okay, this is Tim from A61 Wood Seat Sewing Machines. We've been having a lot of people trying to take the needle threader off the V series. So it is quite complicated and you need a few little bits and bobs to get it off and back on straight. So I'm just going to show you the first thing you need to remove is this washer, uh, circlip washer, which is on the bottom of the needle threader to allow the needle threader to all slide down and slide off. And the way to do this, well, it's entirely up to you. But the idea would be to put a screwdriver under the edge and click it off. Now, of course, these 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 little uh, circlips are quite strong, so they go flying. So you can put a piece of tape behind the needle threader like this, uh, or something to catch it as it flies off. But be warned, uh, they do fly off. Uh, so I, I'm just going to remove this one uh, and then come straight back to so you. So I've put my screwdriver under the edge of the circlip and I've just poked it and flicked it off to the side. And as you can see, they're very small and uh, it can be very, very fiddly to remove and quite fiddly to get back on. So I've now removed the circlip. Now the next thing is the actual needle threader will slide down off of this shaft. But what you can't see is that there is a spring that hooks around the top of the needle threader that needs to be released. So um, I'm just going to slide this down and I'll, uh, I'll show you straight away. Okay, so I've got my spring remover and I've just pulled the spring off the needle threader which you can now see as I'm moving it to the right. And then the whole needle threader now slides down and comes off the shaft. And with this off the shaft at the moment, you can actually see the spring I've got here, which actually it's got a hook on it, which falls back onto the needle threader and pulls it to the left hand side. Now, if you don't have a spring remover like I've got, what I will normally do is slide the needle threader down slightly. You can click this off with a screwdriver, slide it up. Uh, and then to get it back on, the easy way to do that. Okay, so we can see the spring here before we actually put the needle threader back on the new one. This needs to be pulled back to the right hand side. So the only way I can think of doing this without using a spring puller is to get some thread and put the thread underneath the spring like this. I'll just double it over, pull the spring to the right hand side like this and then if you wind the thread around the needle stop screw nice and tight a few times hopefully when you've done that it keeps the spring in the right hand position so that the threader can now go back up the shaft okay so we've got the threader off and obviously it's in multiple pieces there could be bits all over by now but you should basically have four sections you've got the threader which is the first part You've got the link arm, which is the second part. Now there's a joining link, which pops onto the other side and it's it's different both ways. One, one side is thicker than the other. And then you've also got the cotton hold, which is on the left hand side with the spring on, which sometimes by the way, gets broke off. And of course that stops the thread in as well. So it might not be the thread, or it may well be this, or the spring's popped off. So to put this back together, you've got this piece with the longer piece to the right hand side paint, pointing downhill. And the left hand side it just clips on to this piece like that now the link arm one's got a ball on the top and one straight so the ball part goes through the plastic arm like that and then obviously if you've got a new needle threader obviously the needle threader goes on with the v to the left and the hook to the right sounds quite straightforward but i suppose it's easy to get upside down slides up onto the shaft now to get this back into the position it needs to go on it goes back into this position like that. So now you can see that everything is in line to go up onto the shaft. So when this goes up onto the shaft, in the back of the machine, there's a point where this ball goes into a track. The track actually activates the needle threader and swings it around. So I'll get this lined up and be straight back. Right, now we've got this all in one piece and it's got to go back up onto the shaft. You can see there's two little pips either side of the shaft which go up the center of this hole you can see the two recesses on the sides so basically the only way to do it is to it's a bit fiddly is to get it all lined up onto the shaft and slide it up the center so as it's going up you can see the spring on the right hand side the spring on the right hand side actually locates onto the piece of metal which you can see at the end of my finger just there so it actually pushes this back to the left hand side so it's going up onto the center of the shaft they are quite tight and of course it will click and go to the top 
Um, now you can't see, but that round the back, the, the little peg goes into the slider at the back. It's quite straightforward to see. It may well go up and the little peg go either side of the plastic groove. It's quite straightforward. Just click it back into the center of the groove. Uh, we'll post a picture in a second. And of course then also we've got to get the spring back onto the shaft. Now obviously because we've got it to the right hand side now, it's a straightforward way of undoing it. And you can see my spring as I let this go back it will go back onto the piece of metal and hold the needle threader to the left. Slide the piece of cotton out or reuse your springs, spring remover to slide it on. And the last thing now is to put the circlip onto the base. So I would suggest that you test the needle threader now. It doesn't matter about the circlip being on just to try it. If all's good and all's well and you've got the groove in the back and everything's functioning great, then simply get your circlip and pop your circlip back on. And the way I do that is I will slide the circlip against the piece of metal over the top of where it's got to go. Like I say, they are very, very tricky and very, very tight and they do tend to fling off. So I then get my screwdriver, put the flat on my screwdriver and click it on. And again, it's just a fiddly way of doing it. As you can see, it's not straightforward, but if you get it straight in the, sec in the center, get it lined up and click it. And there you go, it's gone back on the bottom of the shaft. And then the only thing you've got to do is test the needle threader. Uh, try it again, obviously, if you've tried it before, because obviously before you've put this on, you can see what's going on. So you can see they're not a straightforward job. And obviously, uh, by no means do I tell you to do this. If you really want to have a go, then you can see how to do it. Um, but it's obviously far easier to be able to get it to your local dealer and get them to do that for you. Um, it's far simpler, far easier, but if you really want to have a go and you feel mechanically uh, competent to do this, uh, then you can see how we do it here. Thanks for watching and get back to us.